Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make copper acetate using copper sulfate as a precursor. Now, a lot of videos on YouTube will go over making copper acetate using elemental copper found in pennies, which I'll do a video on that as well if you'd like to see it, let me know down in the comments. But I figure it would be a neat thing to see it made using copper sulfate, uh, because I have a 10 pound bag of that. and. Um, I want to work through it. <laughs> um, for this, I'm going to weigh out 16.84 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate, and to do this, I recommend using a disposable spoon because using actual cutlery uh, for this process is not a good idea. Copper sulfate is mildly toxic to people and heavily toxic to small animals and children. So definitely don't do this reaction if you do not know what you're doing. And like I said, use disposable uh, utensils because it just makes everything so much easier. For this reaction, we're going to add the copper sulfate into our reaction vessel, in my case, a beautiful mason jar. Uh, make sure that it's rinsed out with distilled water before you do any of this. Uh, now to this, I'm going to add a small amount of distilled water and I'm going to try and dissolve down as much as possible. Now like the first video I made on this channel, I'm going to be making copper carbon. To make copper carbonate, I'm going to start by adding in spoonfuls of sodium bicarb. Now you can also use sodium carbonate if you have it, but I prefer just to use sodium bicarb. Um, now as this reaction proceeds, it's going to have a lot of foaming. So you're going to want to be very, very careful with the amount at which you add and the speed at which you add the sodium bicarb into the reaction vessel. A bit of forewarning, uh, it's going to pop and it's going to froth and it's really hard to control the foaming in this reaction if you're not stirring it. And I didn't really want to keep stirring it um, and I just started adding in the baking soda in larger clumps. So, the one issue with this reaction is, other than taking a long time and copper carbonate sticking to absolutely everything, if you, if you have a really intricate piece of glassware, I would not recommend doing this because this copper carbonate is very water insoluble. One other thing to note is that you will be adding in vinegar to this reaction vessel, which means a lot more foaming and a lot more bubbling as the production of carbon dioxide gas uh, increases. So any excess sodium bicarb that you have in the solution will be converted into carbon dioxide gas. However, if you're using a small reaction vessel like I did, it is very unwise to add too much of an excess. It is now the next morning, and I have filtered off my copper carbonate. Now, I don't know where the video of the filtration steps went. Uh, I apologize. However, the, the simple way to do it is to just filter it with coffee filter and keep running distilled water through it. Now, because I didn't wait for this stuff to dry and I rushed it, I have a lot of excess water in the vessel. Since this was just a proof of concept video, you're going to make sure that it dries all the way. I'm going to begin to add in the acetic acid. And as you'll see, I added in way too quickly, and as a result, it foamed over. I lost a bit of my product, and, well, I had to clean it up. But the idea is that nobody's perfect and use a large vessel, and this is a noteworthy thing for you. This is why we always wear gloves and clean the workspace. <laughs> and 
little safety paper towel never hurt anybody. Now I'm going to very slowly add some more in and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to vigorously stir this. Again, disposable spoon, disposable towels, disposable gloves, it, they're key. Now, this is more of a how to do this at home with what you have video than a Nile Red or a Cody's Lab video where you have a lot of expensive glassware and stir rods and stir bars and all that good stuff. Now you can see if I don't stir, uh, we're going to have a lot of, well, release of carbon dioxide and it's going to foam up. Uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, is produced because vinegar is reacting not only with our copper carbonate to release CO2, but it is also reacting with excess sodium bicarb that we have in the container. That's why it's very important you do not use too much of an excess because you will have to add more vinegar. Now, because this is Walmart brand vinegar, you're going to have to add a lot more uh, than you would have to if you were working with concentrated acetic acid. Now you can find concentrated acetic acid on Amazon for $12 for a gallon, but I didn't have any at the time of shooting. You can see that if you stir the top of the solution and just stir the bubbles away, you can control the foaming a lot easier than if you're actually stirring the liquid part of the container. After all the vinegar has been added, you will need to do one final filtration and wash once more with distilled water and you should end up with a beaker full of purple liquid. Now this is indicative of copper acetate and upon drying you will be left with these deep purple crystals and if they are crude, contaminated with copper hydroxide, they will have light teal impurities in them. The best way to get rid of these impurities is to once more add distilled water and filter off to the best of your ability using a coffee filter to catch all the water insoluble copper hydroxide. If done correctly, you should end up with a relatively pure sample of copper acetate. Here is a sample of copper sulfate. To the right of that, I have some copper acetate. To the right of that, I have some concentrated copper acetate with some crystals forming at the bottom and next to that I have the crystalline powder we've obtained through two trials of this, one with 14 grams and the other with about 50 grams. Alright, that is all for this video. Thank you for watching.